Hello everyone, I'm Yvonne, a children's librarian here at the Manchester City Library, and welcome to our winter elementary experiments. Um, these are activities and crafts made for grades one through six that have a science, technology, engineering, art, or math component. We are continuing uh, to have our in-person um, elementary experiments on the second Wednesday and the fourth Tuesday of each month at 3.30 p.m. in the winter room at the Manchester City Library. We are posting these videos for anyone who um, is not able to attend, um, and they will be posted at the same time as our events. Um, but if you are in grades one through six and you would like to attend um, and do our experiments in person, please register for our next elementary experiments on our website. In-person attendance will also guarantee that you will get a kit, a kit um, to help you complete our craft portion of our elementary experiments. Um, although any extra kits that we have will be available at the Children's Reference Desk while supplies last, um, so if you weren't able to go um, in person, but you can um, get to uh, the library um, after this video goes up, just go ahead and ask to see if we have any extras. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into this week's elementary experiments. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's elementary experiments where we are going to be talking about the year of the dragon which is going to start um, on the lunar new year which this year is February 10th uh, 2024. The year of the dragon gets its name from the Chinese zodiac um, which is a cycle of 12 years in which each year is assigned a different animal. This year's is going to be the year of the dragon whereas last year's um, was the year of the rabbit. Um, and um, the cycle is the same every time, so they are in a fixed pattern. Uh, so if someone was born 12 years ago, um, then they would also have been born in the year of the dragon um, once we um, are in the year of the dragon. Uh, it's actually really fun to try and calculate um, what year you were born in. Um, you can also look it up um, online or um, in some of our books. Um, in fact, I am going to recommend um, a couple of really fun stories at the end um, of our experiments where you can read the story of how the zodiacs um, became a thing and how the animals were chosen and um, how the order of the animals were chosen. It's kind of a really cool um, mythology to read if you don't already know about it. Uh, so for our um, activity, we are going to be making uh, fireless firecrackers. This is something we have done before, um, but I really love it because it's uh, super easy to do and is always great for impressing friends and family. Uh, traditionally, fireworks and firecrackers are set off during Lunar New Year. Uh, to chase away bad luck and bad spirits. So if you are living somewhere where um, setting off uh, firecrackers or otherwise having fire is frowned upon, or you want to celebrate somewhere like the library where we're also not allowed to play with fire, uh, this is a really um, great option because it's not so much the fire that will um, chase away the bad luck as the loud noise. Um, so by making our fireless firecrackers, we can still uh, chase off the bad luck and have a wonderful new year. Uh, so let me get our supplies so I can show you how to do that. Welcome to our activities where we are going to make a fireless firecracker today. Um, so basically the only supply you need is a piece of paper. Um, so a standard um, piece of printer paper um, will totally work um, or anything that is sort of the rectangular shape um, in the sort of usual dimensions um, will work. And of course you can experiment to see um, how other shapes will um, change it, but this is definitely um, what's going to make it the easiest. Uh, so um, since we are doing this specifically for Lunar New Year, um, red um, is going to be a very good color um, for in most um, um, Asian cultures, red is considered very lucky. 
Um, what we might what we might not want to use is actually white, um, because in a lot of um, Asian cultures, white is actually what you wear to like a funeral. Um, so instead of um, black, which is something that is um, seen more in European cultures, um, you would wear white to a funeral. So you might not want to use white when you're celebrating um, the new year, because again, we're trying to chase away the bad luck rather than um, have it hang around. Um, if you do want to do some coloring, of course, white um, will be fine because then you can um, turn it into something a lot more happy and colorful. Some more traditional colors are definitely um, your reds and your golds for luck and fortune. Um, but like I said, we only need one of these. So I think I'm going to go with our gold. Um, and what we need to do is we're going to take our um, rectangular sheet of paper and we are going to um, fold it what I call hot dog style. So we're going to um, fold it so that the long sides touch each other at the corners and then press down. So here it looks a bit like a hot dog bun. Then we are going to unfold and then we are going to fold our long edge up to that crease that we just made. We have folded up to the crease and then we are going to fold um, that original fold. Um, so now we have our, um, it's basically folded in half, but then the one half is folded a couple more times. So then we're going to take the fold and we're going to put it down and fold our paper, what I call hamburger style. So that we're going to take our short ends and line up those corners and then press that down. Like this. Um, and then this is the tricky part. So we have our fold. Now what we're going to do is we are going to, let me see if I can, if you guys can see this. So this is the folded part, you see. And we're going to um, gently grab the um, spine side. So if this was a book, right, this would be the spine. So we're going to grab the spine side of the fold so it moves a little bit while holding this um, outer corner. And we're going to pull this until we see this kind of mountain up here. And then we are going to grab this corner and rotate. So you see almost like a heart design here. See, um, so we are grabbing just the corners and we are not grabbing this part. And then what we're going to do is we are going to um, do this in like a flicking motion downwards. And that should get us a nice cracking noise. Here we go. Okay. And there we have our um, used firecracker. But another nice thing about this fireless firecracker is that it doesn't burn up. So we can actually reuse it by folding the paper again, taking that corner gently, the spine, and this corner, pulling till the mountain appears. Grabbing this corner and crack. All right, so the science of what is happening here um, is that, um, uh, so air is being caught inside of these hoops. Um, and when you um, flick it downwards, um, the air is catching inside and flipping um, this out to the new position. Um, this causes the air to hit the paper like it was um, a, a drum. The air hits the membrane of the paper and like when you hit the top of a drum that causes the membrane of the paper to vibrate um, and that vibration um, spreads through the air molecules and then um, hits our ear um, and causes that to vibrate as well. Um, so like all sound really, um, it is about vibrations um, and how much something is vibrating and causing that vibration to be 
um, enough so that our ears can pick it up, right? So that our eardrums can also feel that vibration and tell our brains, hey, there's a noise out there. Um, so I will say, please uh, <laughs> be responsible. We want to scare away bad luck and bad spirits, not to scare away our family and friends, especially if they are holding anything breakable. Um, but besides that, please enjoy. Um, I will give you one last challenge as far as our fireless firecrackers go, and that is to see if you can write a message on our fire on your firecracker that um, you cannot read um, until um, you actually crack it open, right? So see if you can do that, if you can write it on here um, and then have it be almost like a secret message that um, you have to uh, crack your firecracker open to read. Um, that is my extra challenge for you guys, but either way, I hope you um, enjoy and have a very lucky new year. Welcome to our Year of the Dragon craft, where we are going to be making a flying dragon. Um, so um, if you were not part of our in-person um, Year of the Dragon um, elementary experiments group, you can still pick up a craft kit um, that has most of what you need to make this Year of the Dragon um, flying dragon um, at home. Um, if you want to pick that up, it is going to be at the Manchester City Library the main branch at the children's desk. Um, so definitely pick that up while supplies last. Um, if you um, were not able to pick up one of these kits, um, then hopefully you'll be able to um, find or create what we have in here. Most of it is pretty easy. Um, we of course have our directions, which we will be going over. Um, we have a, um, a paper um, tube. So this is um, a toilet paper tube. You can also cut down um, um, a paper towel roll or even um, some of the wrapping paper rolls. Anything, as long as it's about this size. You can even honestly just make your own um, if you have um, something like cardstock or thin paper that you can roll carefully and tape really well. Um, so we've got that. We have, um, this is actually two pieces of yarn on here. Um, about five feet long each. Um, and then we have um, our dragon pieces. Um, this, if you're doing on your own, you are going to have to be uh, super creative and artistic. Um, and honestly, even if you um, pick up our kit, um, if you want to make your own pieces rather than just um, cut out the pieces we give you, you can always um, color those on the back. Um, this is cardstock, so it is a little bit um, heavier than normal paper. Um, if you don't have cardstock, um, normal people will work. I tried it out with my test dragon, um, but it is going to um, it's going to get a little bit um, roughed up um, as you play. So just so you are aware of that, um, we also give you um, a half a sheet of normal printer paper. Um, and this is to use for decorating um, the body of your dragon. Okay, speaking of decorating the body of our dragon, um, I do have some coloring materials. Um, you can also use uh, stickers or paint or glitter or other different colors or patterns of paper that you have at home. All these are great options for um, creating your dragon. It is yours. Um, it should be the type of dragon you want it to be. Um, then we have some tape and or glue um, to put all of your pieces together. I'm using tape so that um, we don't have to wait for things to dry. Um, and then of course, uh, scissors to help cut things out. Um, and then um, uh, anything, any other coloring pieces or pencils, especially if you are making your own um, dragon parts. Okay, um, one thing I will say is um, we are celebrating um, Lunar New Year, which is um, primarily celebrated um, in Asia. Uh, and traditionally, um, Asian dragons actually are able to fly without wings, which is pretty super cool. 
Um, I did include some wings on here um, just in case um, you wanted the extra coloring surface basically for the um, wings. Um, but that's up to you whether or not you want your dragon to be more um, of an Eastern dragon, um, which is the, the traditional um, Lunar New Year dragon and the Zodiac dragon without wings um, is able to fly um, on its own power, or if you wanted to add the wings and have it be um, more of a um, Western uh, dragon who like guards treasure rather than guards people. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to point that out before we got too far into it. All right, so the first thing that you're probably gonna wanna do is the coloring. Um, I find that it's easier to color before we cut stuff out and start taping things on, um, but that's up to you. Um, you can cut things out first. Uh, I'm just gonna do this my way and you can follow along or jump ahead. All right, so we're not gonna need all of this paper. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to roll this tube up and find where it overlaps. I'm gonna let it overlap a little bit so we have some wiggle room and then mark it. I'm gonna fold it just a tad. So see where we can see this fold. Now a way to get really nice straight lines um, is if you have um, something that you know has a um, straight side, um, is you can fold that side up um, against itself. Um, so it's, it's hard to see with those white on white, but we've got the corner here and we're going to line it up um, exactly with the side on that part we marked. And then we are going to Flatten that down, and then we have a really nice marked straight line that we can use to cut. And then we have the paper that is the right size to go around this. Um, again, I think it's easier to color it when it's flat, um, but that's up to you. Sometimes it's easier to see like if you want scales or jewels or something to be in exactly the right place. Sometimes it's easier to do that on the um, roll. Um, either way, um, we've got our body and we're going to go ahead and color it as well. All right, so I have um, my pieces ready to go. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to cut out um, my dragon pieces. Um, and one thing that I found um, makes cutting easier, uh, especially when we have like a lot of these little like um, jagged pieces um, or like when it comes into like a triangle here, um, is cutting from both sides, right? So you don't have to cut one direction the whole time. Um, if we cut in here around this horn to that point, then we can actually come from this way and cut to that point again to pop out this piece. Um, so honestly, what I what I find happens is if you try to cut here and then turn all the way around um, and keep cutting, um, is that sometimes that will tear the paper. Um, so I find that cutting um, one way and then the other way um, is faster um, and safer for your artwork. Um, so that is my hint, um, and I am going to uh, cut the rest of this out. All right, now it is time to put our flying dragon together. Um, so first we're going to take our tube and our um, body, um, and we are going to tape or glue um, this together. Remember, I'm using tape because it is faster. Okay, so I've got my body together. Now, as you can see, this tube is a little bit taller than my paper. Um, sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes your paper is a little taller than the tube. Um, you can always just trim that down. 
here we go. Now you gotta figure out where you want to attach your um, head, tail, and wings if you want them. Here is my dragon um, with wings. And then again, you can do more of an Asian uh, dragon without wings. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and send my uh, dragon um, flying without his wings. So how to make your dragon fly, that's where we are going to bring in our yarn. So if you go ahead and unwrap your yarn. All right, so you'll have two pieces that are about five-ish feet long. Um, what I would suggest to do is to um, tie little loops in the yarn. Um, so you want these to be about the same um, length, right? So when you tie a loop in, then you want to make sure that all of your loops are about that same size. If not, it's okay. Like it, it won't like ruin it, but it will be a little bit easier and more fun to play with if um, all your loops are tied at about the same, um, the same that, so that your loops shorten the yarn about the same amount for each one tied, right? So you're going to want to tie four loops one for each end of each string. Um, and then what we're gonna do is, um, there's really two ways uh, to play with your flying dragon. You can play by yourself, which means you are going to need to um, loop um, one of your yarns um, or um, onto a hook or a doorknob or something that is safe um, for you to pull on that it won't break or like, fall over on you. So um, I would suggest getting an adult to okay whatever you're going to play on um, or with just to make sure it's safe. First rule of elementary experiments is to be safe and then to have fun. So we got to get that covered first. Um, the other way to play is with another person. Um, and if you're playing with another person, um, you are going to hold um, one end of each yarn. So we've got one and then we've got two and you will each hold an end um, and your dragon is going to be put onto the string um, so that it is whoops, floating in between your two yarns um, or to your hands at the end of the yarn um, and then you are going to um, send the dragon back and forth to each other by pulling apart the string um, and closing the string. So if my if I pull the string apart, then my partner on the other hand, or on the other end will have their hands together as I send the dragon to them. And it's not, not just pulling it apart and holding it, but you're gonna wanna send it real quick in one like fast jerk and pull your hands back together. And then you'll see the dragon launch itself off, and it is pretty cool. Um, I have my setup here with my strings, um, and I have attached it to um, a hook um, up above us, um, and it is safe. I'm not going to like pull anything down on my head. Um, so to show you here, we've got our dragon, um, and this would be, obviously, I'm playing by myself. So I'm going to insert my yarn with my little loops. You can see my little loops um, so that I can put my fingers through the loops and it's easier to hold because it is there is going to be a bit of a jerk, right? Um, and that's why it's if you don't have loops, it can be really easy um, to have the yarn um, go out of your hands. Um, the, other, the other side of that is if you do have loops and your fingers are in the loops, um, and you're playing with, a, especially if you're playing with a friend, um, you still don't want to jerk too hard because if, you're, if your fingers are stuck in the loops, um, then your fingers could get hurt rather than the yarn just flying out of your hands. But anyway, as a demonstration, we are going to um, have, our, um, have our dragon down here and we are going to give it that up. You see how very quickly he goes. Um, and obviously, like you could push the dragon up, right? Like this. 
drive, uh, go faster, go higher, right? But it's not as fast or as smooth um, as when we um, pull the yarn to, whoop, <laughs> to throw him right up. And obviously I did it too hard and um, my loops came off the hook. But you can see um, how much fun it can be um, to uh, send your dragon um, either um, on, on a hook by itself or if you have a friend um, because then you can see how fast and how smoothly you can send the dragon back and forth to each other. Because when you start off, it's kind of you're kind of going to go um, and send the dragon and it's probably going to stop and then send it back and stop. But if you do a little bit of practice, you can start sending the dragon back and forth very smoothly and it's like flying across the sky, um, which I think is very fun. Um, this is also an example of using a lever or a wedge. Um, so these are what we call simple tools. Um, a lever is when you have um, like a stick, right? Um, and then you have a um, sort of balance point um, and you use that to make lifting something easier. Um, you can see this if you've ever played on a seesaw, right? Um, that makes um, pushing a, your friend um, up into the air um, a lot easier than it would be if you were standing underneath them and just trying to push them up. Um, we are kind of doing something similar with our flying dragon, right? Um, so we are using our string um, and we are kind of making that lever, um, but it's not quite a lever because um, if you recall, we don't have that pivot point um, necessarily, right? But what we do form um, is a wedge. So a wedge is like this, right? So um, you can think of it as um, a nail or an ax will have a wedge um, that gets its point into something and then it forces material to go up the sides and be separated. Because in our dragon, um, we don't have our wedge embedded inside of our dragon, right? So there, the force that we are applying is not being directed into something to break it apart, um, but instead is um, underneath the dragon and is forming a wedge here. Um, and the top of our wedge is actually up here where we have it looped under. So instead of the force being used to um, cut into our dragon, it's being used to propel our dragon um, up in the air um, and to go quickly. So um, these different things that we have just covered are all called, as I mentioned, simple machines. And simple machines are uh, devices for applying force um, and to are used to multiply that force. Um, so like with a teeter-totter, or as we can tell if we just use our dragon and if we try and just um, push our dragon up the string, versus um, pulling like this, you can tell that it takes a lot less force to use our string to propel the dragon than it does to try and throw it up into the air up the string. Um, and that shows that our symbol machine um, in our sort of um, modified wedge slash inclined plane is working because it's making it easier for us. It's making us do less work to make the dragon fly the same um, distance up into the air or up on the string or out to your um, friend or partner. Uh, so anyway, that is how we are making our um, dragon fly for um, this year of the dragon. Um, I hope that you enjoy and make some really cool dragon designs. That is all we have for our craft, so I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you enjoyed this elementary experiment looking into the Year of the Dragon. Um, remember that you can um, pick up um, our kit um, if you want to do our craft at home. Um, and if you would like to come into our next in-person session um, at the beginning of next month, please check out the event calendar on our library homepage to uh, sign up so that we make sure that we have enough um, craft kits and activity supplies for everyone. Um, uh, remember, I uh, did promise uh, that I would put up some very cool 
um, books on the origin or the legend of the zodiac. And if you are curious about what animal of the zodiac you are, I will put a little infographic or a little picture that lists um, the different years um, and which animal that they are assigned to on the zodiac if you don't want to do all the math yourself. Um, you can also look up your friends um, and family members to see what kind of animal they were as well. So I hope that you enjoyed um, this little bit of science and um, dragon crafting. But that is all we have for this year of the dragon elementary experiments. Um, I will see you in a couple weeks, either here online or in person. So until then, bye!